For those of you new to wet felting, once you've mastered the art of creating flat felt, I'm sure you're wondering how you can make a beautiful and flexible piece of Nuno felt. You may even be wondering what Nuno felt actually is. So Nuno felt is a marvellous technique where a high percentage of fabric is combined with a very small percentage of wool. And this leads to really soft and beautiful felt, particularly suited to wearable clothing and accessories. What I have here is a Nuno felt scarf. It has one fine even layer of wool and embellishing fibres on top of a layer of pongé silk. Now this silk isn't very heavy, it's five mommy, and if you're starting to Nuno felt, I recommend that you start with a lighter weight fabric until you're familiar with the technique. So during this video, I'm going to take you step by step through the process of making your first piece of Nuno felt. I'm going to do that from start to finish, so you can see how I work and you can follow along with your own piece. Let's go. For your reference, my finished scarf weighs 65 grams, which is just under 2.5 ounces. Go. So the first thing I need to do is select my fabric and my fiber. And for this particular demonstration, I'm actually going to use a rolled edge silk scarf. It's a beautiful scarf. It's satin. I think it may actually have been my grandmother's, but I need to choose a fibre or a colour of fibre to go with this. And a tip for you, if you have a patterned piece of fabric that you're using, I suggest you go for one of the strong colours that are in the pattern, preferably darker rather than lighter. And the reason for this is if you choose a light fabric, as the wool fibre migrates through the fabric and the wool starts to shrink, it's a little bit like diluting paint. The paler the colour, the less vibrant your surface of the Nuno felt will be. So I have selected <clears throat> three colours here, which could actually go with this scarf, and I particularly like the purple. So the purple is the one that I'm going to use for my video demonstration where I take you step by step in real time with making a Nuno felt scarf. I also need to gather my regular wet felting supplies. I like to have my water in either a ceramic bowl or a saucepan. Usually I work with hot water, although for Nuno felt by hand, it's much better to use lukewarm water at the beginning. It's just good practice to get used to using ceramic or metal though, because you don't want to be putting hot water into plastic containers. And I choose to use a sprinkler. It's called a bowl browser. I choose to use this for adding my water onto my felt and then I apply my olive oil soap through a net. But if you're new to felting and you don't have one of these, don't worry. I have a YouTube video explaining how you can make a soap and water solution and then you can just use a pop bottle, punch a few holes in the top of it to sprinkle the water on. But for the purpose of the video, I will be using this. I've got an old towel. I've got two pieces of bubble wrap that are bigger all round. They're square or relatively square, they're rectangular, and they're bigger than the size of my silk scarf that I'm going to be felting. And I like to apply the soap through a net and you're going to see me doing this during the video. It's also how I apply soap when I'm making flat felt. So if you've done no felting before, why not check out my step-by-step wet felting tutorial where I make a piece of flat felt. That will be the stage before making a piece of Nuno felt. And if you're wondering where to get something suitable for a net, um, quite a few of the stores and the homeware stores do sort of plasticky or artificially nets. Now I try and be as sustainable as possible in my textile practice. So if you go to any thrift store or secondhand store, you'll often find pieces of net curtain like this. 
and they are absolutely perfect for using. Mosquito netting is also good. Uh, my favourite net was given to me by a friend and it was actually the bathroom curtain in her grandmother's house. So I'm now going to start laying out my wool fibre. So I now have everything assembled that I'm going to use and the first thing I'm doing is laying my silk scarf on the bubble wrap, on one of the pieces of bubble wrap. So I have two rectangles of bubble wrap and the bottom piece I want to make sure that the bubbles are facing upwards. I also want to make sure that I'm laying the fibre on the back of the scarf. This is a satin. It's probably about a 12 mommy and it's got a beautiful hand rolled hem. So I need to make sure that the hem, the hand rolled hem is facing upwards and you might notice that I haven't ironed this scarf. The reason for this will become obvious in a minute. There's no need to iron your fabric before you know no felt. Ideally, I would have a slightly wider piece of bubble wrap as well, but I'm a great believer in working with what you actually have. And as a beginner, I recommend that you have a few inches of bubble wrap around the whole perimeter of your piece. But because I'm not going to lay my fiber out to the very edge of the scarf, I'm happy enough working with this. However, if you only have smaller pieces of bubble wrap, you can use packing tape and you can just stick them together. So I'm going to add a small bit of water, just so that I can stretch the scarf. And that will also mean that those um, creases are going to work their way out a little bit. At least I hope they will. Something to note, when you're working with old fabric, such as this, this is a vintage scarf of my grandmother's, or if you're working with Indian silk, sometimes some of the dye color will actually come out when you are felting. Just don't worry about that. There's nothing you can do about that. But the colors that are most likely to run are purpley pink colors and turquoise. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if this runs. Now you can see that the, the wool is pooling a little bit on top of the silk. Sorry, the water is pooling a little bit on top of the silk. So I could put my felting net down if I wanted to. And I could just press down on top of it. But I'm not actually going to worry too much. I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, sprinkling your fabric with water is also very helpful if you're working in a windy climate. Here in Ireland, I couldn't lay this piece out outside, for example, because it would just lift off the table. But adding a little bit of water does help. So it may not look to you as if I've got rid of the creases, but that'll be absolutely fine. So today I'm choosing to use the purple merino as I showed you uh, in my selection choice earlier. Now this is in a bat form. This is not wool roving or tops, but equally you can use wool roving or tops. This is a short fiber merino and I love working with it, but I would never put a piece as thick as this down. So I'm going to just separate this and peel it. And if you look at this, I'm not sure if you can see the light can go through this more. I could also peel this another time. And so this is even finer. So for Nuno felt, it's nice to work with fine pieces of wool. And I'm going to lay a border of purple around the outside and then I'm going to infill with an uneven layout of fiber. Um, I think the best thing is to actually do it so that you can see what I mean. And with a more uneven layout of fiber, I'm going to end up with more texture in my finished felt. So, I actually like starting um, at the top left hand corner usually. And what I'm doing is I'm going to 
lay overlapping shingles of this fibre all the way around the outside of the piece. I'm not stressing unduly about this. One of the beauties of Nuno felt is how beautiful all the puckering looks. So again, this here is too thick. So I will peel down until I have it at a similar thickness to that previous piece I was working with. So you just need to take your time with this. And it's like anything, practice helps. It's not going to be perfect your first time. Or maybe it will be. Mine certainly wasn't. So try and get into a rhythm when you're laying out the wool. Each person develops their own way of working. Uh, all I can do is just show you how I work. So as I said, I'm not going right out to the very, very edge of the silk. I'm going to have a little ruffle at the outside, which you will see when um, this piece is felted. just overlapping the different shingles that I'm pulling off. If you put a piece down like I did there and you think that the outside of it is not straight enough, just lift it up. It could go as an infill. I'm trying to keep a relatively straight line around the edge of my piece. I'm not obsessive about this, but if I'm not happy, I will lift the piece of wool up and just reposition the different one in place. So I've now put a layer of fibre the whole way around the outside of the scarf and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to infill, une it sounds contradictory, unevenly but, but it's also going to be relatively even. By that I mean I'm not covering all the silk, I'm going to put the fibre down, leave little gaps in places and they will create more puckering in the finished scarf but I want a relatively even layer of fibre everywhere. You'll see what happens. So normally I would start at the top left and I'll just go like this around the scarf and if you note here I've got some areas with fibre and some without and I keep peeling the that so that none of it is too thick. If you're using roving you can just use very light shingles. And I'm going to keep going at this until the whole scarf is laid out. Another thing to note, each time I put, put the fibre down, 
I'm connecting it to another piece of fibre. So while it looks fairly random, it is connecting to another piece of wool. And I can use all the little bits that I didn't want to use around the outside, they can go down as well. Just need to get a little more wool. When you work with bats, the wool bats are laid down in layers in the woolen mill and you just peel down from a bigger bundle of fibre and then you can split like I was showing you. So I'll just check here. And this takes time, so enjoy the laying out process. Felting is not a quick um, craft, but it is a very enjoyable one. And this could be a good time if you're working by yourself to have some music on. I tend to have more aggressive <laughs> or livelier music um, if I'm making a bigger project, such as a felt rug, for example. The largest rug I made took me six full weeks, so you can imagine there was a lot of laying out, a lot of rubbing and rolling, and I liked um, a bit of country and western at that stage because it was a good uh, music to felt to. So I hope you're beginning to understand what I meant by um, leaving gaps but still creating quite an all over effect. So it's sort of evenly uneven. I see a tiny little piece of red wool on top of the purple. I could leave it there, but I'm actually going to just take that away. Um, it's best practice to save or store your wool individual colors by themselves, but sometimes you'll discover that you do pick up little bits from other, other batches of wool. So just try and move them away and keep your wool nice and clean. I'm joining the outside edges. You may find also that it is easier to lay out your fiber um, when you're standing up. It, it is my personal preference for the purpose of the video. Um, I did want to make it easier for you to see, hence I'm sitting down, but usually I would lay out standing up, but I would do a lot of the rubbing when I'm sitting down. So it's a personal preference. Um, make sure that you work at a table height that suits you and that you're not hurting your body because felting is physical and you want to make sure you give your body the best chance of not getting sore. So starting to get there now. Another little fibre. If you're working with roving, the fibre is going to be lined very much straighter, roving or tops. 
So you need to just be aware that whichever direction you lay your fiber, the felt is going to shrink more. With these short fibered um, bats, it shrinks more evenly. So that is just something to take into account. Um, if you're working on a long piece and you lay the fiber width ways, it will make your piece narrower, or if you weigh it, lay it lengthways, it will make your piece shorter. So that's just something with experience you become used to. But this, this wool that I'm using today, the short fiber bat, that tends to shrink fairly evenly in the same direction. So, just a little bit more wool and then we are finished laying out. So for a scarf like this, once I've got this main body of wool laid out, I'm going to stand up, I'm going to have a look at it, and there will be a few areas where I may choose to add some more wool. So when I stand up, I can see that this area here, there's quite a lot of silk showing, and there's a bit of a stripe here that doesn't have silk. So they would be two examples. So rather than laying a bigger piece of wool there, what I'm going to do is just take a small, very fine, light piece, and I'll just cross that over the silk there. And I think I need something there. So I won't necessarily put as thick a piece of wool down. I'll just put a few little wisps of wool in areas where I feel it could do with just a little bit more. Here's another area, for example, there's quite a piece of silk showing. It needs some sort of wool to break that up. But this is something that you need to experiment for yourselves. I, I don't want to be too prescriptive. I want you all to enjoy the process. Whatever happens, I think this is going to be beautiful. Um, and whatever happens when you're making your piece, I'm quite confident yours will be beautiful too. So one more look. Mm -hmm. Here's an area I could have a tiny bit more wool. Up here maybe just a little wisp. I think I'm happy running with that. So the next stage of the process is to add water, put my felting net down, add the soap through the felting net, and then I'm going to add my embellishing fibers. When I started wet felting, I was told that you put dry fiber on dry fiber. So that would be dry embellishing fiber on the wool in this case. However, I've learned from experience that by adding water and soap before I add my embellishing fibers, I have more control over how the embellishing fibers are laid out. I can lift them up if necessary and it doesn't disturb the wool too. So I have actually fairly hot water in my ceramic container. I'm just going to sprinkle this lightly over the piece, put the net and the soap. As I said, with Nuno felting, you tend to work with cooler water rather than hot. 
and actually the reason for that is we don't want the wool fibre to felt together and combine quickly before it travels through the fabric but because I'm going to be laying the embellishing fibres out it's all going to have cooled down anyway before I start to felt. So starting at the top left hand side I just go back and forwards over the piece not flooding it with wool. It's important not to add or not flooding it with water sorry it's important not to add too much water because you don't want the wool to float off the silk. Again take your time enjoy what you're doing. Felting is such a wonderful process. Do you have any of your mother or grandmother's scarves that you can actually felt? If you do, why not drop me a comment in the video description below. I'd love to know if you like working with old family pieces as much as I do. And if you're getting value out of this video already, don't forget to hit the subscribe key. So I've added water onto the piece and it's easy enough to add more water, but it's not so easy to take it away. So I do urge you to just to be careful not to put too much on at the beginning, particularly if you're new to felting. And I take my felting net and I'm just going to position it down on top of my piece. And with my olive oil soap, I'm going to start in the middle here. And I'm just going to work in about six inch increments. And all I'm doing is just going over the surface of the net once with the soap. Any weight that I'm putting on is going down. Rather than sideways, because if I rub this too hard in a sideways motion, what will happen is I'm going to also shift the wool fiber. If I put too much soap on, it's going to be more difficult for the embellishing fibres to combine with the wool. So just a light rub at this stage. And once I've done that, I'm just going to put my hands down and give it the lightest of rubs before I peel the net back. That's really just to work the soapy water into the wool a small bit. Flatten things and make it easier to peel the net back. If you have watched my full step-by-step -step wet felting tutorial, you will know that I'm a big fan of sweeping the edges of your felt in to keep them neater but because I haven't put the wool fibre out to the edge of the scarf this is not necessary for this piece. So now that I've flattened it I'm just going to very carefully start peeling the net back and if the wool is sticking to the net such as here I need to be careful just to um, make sure that I don't lift everything up. And I do this, my own hands are wet and soapy. So rather than having my hands dry, there we go. Now, if a little piece lifts up, don't stress, just with your soapy hands, just put it down again. It's almost like stroking a cat or something. Just keep an eye on the fibre as you peel your net back. And I find that keeping my net low to the table and low to the piece I'm laying out is very helpful. So now I can see that I have my wool fibre laid out. 
I can see areas where there's not so much fiber and this is something that I want but I can also see that those areas are quite evenly dispersed over the whole piece. So that's what I mean by laying out an, an even uneven layer. Um, there is one section here that to me looks a tiny, tiny, tiny bit light. So I'm going to grab one small piece of wool and just put it there. Whereas everywhere else looks nice and even. And up here, the fibre has moved slightly to the edge of the scarf. So I'll just put it there. And when I say I'm adding a, another little bit of wool, we're talking about a tiny little bit of wool just across there. And I'll put another there. So you may remember I had decided that I was going to use this linen thread as my embellishing um, fiber. It's, it's, it's like long fibers pieces of linen. It's not, I don't think it's actually been spun. And this is a waste product from a local linen mill. And linen is really interesting. When the wool starts to shrink, as it does during the felting process, unlike silk or bamboo or maybe tencel embellishing fibres, the linen has a very different crimp. And what I mean by crimp is how it shrinks. So it shrinks and rather than a sort of an S curvy bend, linen tends to shrink with much more angular um, end results. So it will be very interesting to see these fibres on the surface of the felt when I'm finished. So I'm just going to pull some individual strands or, or little clumps of strands of fibre out. And I could just lay these very, very randomly, or I might choose to lay them in a more um, obvious pattern. Now, if I lay them over areas where there isn't any wool fibre, such as the areas where I've left the gaps, they're just going to sit on the surface of the felt. So I'm going to put them in a fairly diagonal sort of design here or pattern and I'm going to try and avoid the areas where there is really only just silk fabric. Sometimes I choose to do the opposite but for this piece I want to keep it simple and share technique with you. Share how to lay out the piece from start to finish and not be too stressed about having to work it a lot more. I think it's important when you're learning a new technique not to make it too difficult for yourself. Um, try and learn the technique and then decide that you want to experiment and do more complicated things. So these fibres are actually quite long so I'm just going to take a scissors and um, cut a few shorter lengths. I'm sort of teasing them out in places. It's going to be interesting to see, do you like the finished effect of the red on top of the purple? To me, these colors actually are wonderful together. So, um, I think they'll also complement the silk of the scarf beautifully, but they may not be everybody's top choice. So once I have my embellishing fibres laid out, I'm going to put a very small bit more water on top of the piece and then I'm going to give it a good soap. And you might notice that I'm laying the fibres in this diagonal um, sort of design 
and then they will crinkle up as the piece shrinks so they won't all look quite as diagonal in the finished piece but that's my layout I'm happy with that I think it's important not to stress too much as well just enjoy the process and learn technique and then you can become more adventurous and you'll identify what you personally like later on So I'm not adding too much water, just a bit on the embellishing fibre and a little bit along that top area because I felt there wasn't quite enough water there before and that's why the fibre may have lifted. Putting the, whoops, 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 whoops. Putting the net on again. Now, if you have a, a problem with your net when you're putting it on, these things happen. Um, if there is an issue with your net, don't panic. Just work with what you have, lift it up again, and then reposition it if necessary. I don't think I'm going to need more water, but I'm just going to keep the bowl and the bowl browser near me on the table, but I definitely need a bit more uh, soap. So I just start at the top left and this time I go back and forwards everywhere. Now some people um, may think I'm using a lot of soap but this is what I find works well for me and I can only share with you what works for me. I can't um, do anything other than that. So if you're not used to using so much soap Feel free to do what you want. And that's it. So I just go back and forwards through the net everywhere. What I'm doing is I'm feeling with the tips of my fingers. And what I would like to feel is that my hands are sliding on top of the net and that all the fiber underneath my hands, the whole, the whole piece of felt feels slippery. I'm not putting any pressure in any direction except very slight bit downwards at this stage. And this is just to make sure there's soap and water everywhere before I put the second piece of bubble wrap back. And I'm happy with how this feels. So everything is flat. And I'm carefully going to peel this back. And the joys of live video. I can hear my phone, even though it's on silent, it's vibrating on the dresser. So please excuse that. now going to get my second piece of bubble wrap and the second piece of bubble wrap will go bubbles down on top of this. It would be a good time to take a pause when the second piece of bubble wrap is on top of it but in my case I'm just going to go ahead and start felting. But I'm sure you can see how beautiful the tracing of the or tracery of the linen um, fibre looks on top of the wool and I'm very happy with the fact that I chose the red. I think this is going to look beautiful in the finished piece. So I'm off now just to get that other piece of bubble wrap. Cool. I like to recommend for beginners that you work with two pieces of bubble wrap that are the same size. It's significantly easier when you start to roll your piece. So I have a second piece of bubble wrap here and I cut these identically earlier this morning. And I would press my hands down really from the middle of the package and work out. What I'm trying to do is ensure that there isn't air underneath. Okay. 
And I'm now going to add a little bit of soap and water on the top so that my hands can glide on top of this. Now you may be familiar with the wet felting process as I do it. If you've already watched my full step-by-step -step tutorial for flat felt, but if you haven't, that is something that shares how I like to work. And it entails more rubbing and less rolling than some people may be used to if you have previous experience felting. And I find this leads to a nice quality felt. So once everywhere has a slick of soapy water on top, I'm going to start the rubbing process. And when I rub up and down, that's a count of one, I like to start at the top left hand side, which is where I started laying out the wool in the first place. And I'm going to do 10 rubs up and down there. Then I move over, over, over. And each time when I move to a new area, I overlap the previous one a very slight bit. So I'll be working in rows. I'll do a row, the next row, down to here. And after I have done 10 rubs everywhere, I will peel the bubble wrap down, up, up, off the piece, and I will reposition it because I don't want to work too long with the bubbles in the one place. You're going to see that as we move through this process. So I start at the top. After 10, I move my hands over, another 10. And you can actually see on the bubble wrap where I have been working. So it's easy now to go back with the next layer and not forget anywhere. urge you to be careful at the outside of the piece. Make sure you do go over the edge of the silk, even though the fibre isn't right up to the edge, because you don't want to miss anywhere. This rubbing is actually starting the process. And for the Nuno felting process, we want the wool fibre to migrate through the silk fabric. So this takes longer than if you had two overlapping layers of wool. With flat felt with just wool, one piece of fiber is combining with the other. But with this, we need the fiber to migrate through the silk. So it takes time. Be careful at the edge that you don't move things around too much. I could walk to the other side of the table and it would make that this easier. But for the purpose of the video, I'm going to stick in the same place. Now, usually after I've done 10 everywhere, I just give a little bit of a rub around the outside and then I peel the bubble wrap back. I also have my towel here so I can take the excess soap from my hands. And this is just one more reason it's good to use a gentle natural soap like an olive oil soap because it won't dry out your skin. It's gentle on the fiber and the fabric and it's also gentle on your skin. So, I'm going to carefully peel this back. Ooh, it's looking beautiful. 
and I can actually see that this area here which doesn't look quite as soapy as there and this area here maybe they could do with a tiny bit more soap so if I think that there might be an area that needs a little bit more soap I'm just going to add that now through the net just one little bit there but if you're unsure don't worry your piece will be fine now I think it's a more even color all over. So I just reposition the bubble wrap on top. And the next lot of rubs that I do, I've already rubbed it in this direction. The next lot of rubs are going to be in this direction. So there are two things I could do. If I was working by myself and not recording this video demonstration for you, I would have this piece near the end of my table and I would just move to the end of the table. But for the purpose of the demonstration, or if you're working on a big square table, you can just rotate your piece, providing you are very careful. And this is why if I push the piece down against the bottom layer of bubble wrap, I can just rotate it when I need to and now I can work in this direction. So it's really important with felt that you work every piece of your project evenly and that you rub in different directions. This will give you the best quality felt. So I'm now going to do 10 rubs in this direction all over the piece. Then I'm going to lift the bubble wrap up again and I'm going to reposition the bubble wrap and I'm going to rub it in the opposite direction again. So I'm just going to count quietly to myself. Now even though this scarf is actually square, I haven't gone over this exact edge here, so I'll just do that now. So by spreading my hands, I can cover more of the, the project, but if I discover somewhere hasn't got rubs, I just make sure that I go over it. So this might show me that the piece wasn't 100% square in the first place because I needed to go over that edge there as well. In this place in the bubble wrap I can actually feel some of the bubbles are broken so don't be tempted to burst the bubbles because they will help you when you are creating your felt. I keep using the bubble wrap multiple times until it eventually has lost a lot of the bubbles but it is very much easier when it has all the bubbles and from the sustainability perspective try and save all your um, bubble wrap from packaging projects etc cut it into useful shaped rectangles or squares and then you can just reuse them multiple times until they lose the bubbles.
So I've done 10 in that direction. I'm just going to go around the outside. Peel the bubble wrap off. Perfect. Reposition the bubble wrap again and rotate my piece. So when I reposition the bubble wrap, I always push down to make good contact. If you think about making a sandwich, and um, if I'm making a sandwich, I also push down on the bread before I would cut the sandwich into halves or quarters. So rotating it again. And I'm now going to do the 10 rubs in this direction again. So I'll do that for a few more times. It has to be said that when I started to Nuno Felt, I was not given this advice about rubbing my piece for this length of time. I would have moved straight on to the rolling process, but I do find that the more rubbing I give, the less rolling I have to do, and I do personally think it gives better quality felt. The intention right now is to keep working until I can see the wool fibers coming through on the upper surface of the silk and at that stage when the wool starts to shrink and the fibers have gone through the silk it will crinkle up and form beautiful texture but I don't want that to happen too quickly I want to make sure that the fiber is going through before I'm too aggressive so I'll do another 10 in this direction rotate 10 in the other direction and then I might consider rolling but I also might consider rubbing for another little while if the bubble wrap scrunches up too much just be careful it might be that you need to add a little bit more water on your hands you don't want it to rub on the surface of your felt you want your hands to glide on the surface of the bubble wrap Funny. You may notice I'm not moving as comfortably when my hands are closer to my body and I'm not going up and down as smoothly. This is because I have actually got a slight injury to my shoulder and um, I'm finding it doesn't feel so comfortable. So I ideally would be going up and down in the same motion down here as I did at that upper portion. So now that I've done 10 all over, It's important to note as well that the linen embellishing fibers, they cannot felt 
by themselves. They need the wool to grab hold of them. So they will be very likely to lift up at this stage if you're not careful. So just treat your felt with respect and be aware of that. Any embellishing fibers, unless they are wool, cashmere, or something like yak, they won't be felting in. So it's important to just be gentle with them. I'm going to rotate this one more time and do 10 in that direction. And then we'll move on to roll. It's always helpful. If you do have somebody else in the house with you, you can get them to help you if you're shifting bigger packages. But just remember what I said, if I wasn't recording, I would have this near the edge of a table so I could work from every side. So I wouldn't need to rotate the piece. I'm putting slightly more pressure on this now. All my pressure is downwards. I've done 10 all over again. I'm going to lift the bubble wrap, reposition it, and then I'm going to start rolling. But I would like to have a look and just see how things are before I do that. All is looking pretty good. Now, ideally, when you are felting, you want to give your piece the same amount of rubbing or rolling in a direction that would be, if it was a longer piece, lengthways and widthways. When you're making a Nuno felt scarf, imagine this is significantly longer. It's not going to be easy to roll it um, from side to side lengthways. Um, with a piece like this, I will be able to rotate this piece if I want and work from side to side. But in general with Nuno felt, if you have a longer piece than this, this is square. If you have a long piece, you will only be rolling it um, down the length from both sides. But later on, when you come to doing a little bit of work against the bubble wrap by hand, you can do it in all directions and then you'll be throwing it. So when I roll this piece up, can you see how the top bit of bubble wrap wants to move forward? 
this is normal. So please don't think that you need to keep that top piece of bubble wrap totally flat as you're rolling it. It will move forward. So I just want you all to know that as a beginner, because again, I did not actually realize that when I started to felt and I used to stress if that moved. And it can be really handy to use your towel. It doesn't matter if your towel gets damp. Use your towel to contain the piece of felt. So what I like to do is I like to position the towel and, and use a towel that's really a hand towel size, not a really big towel. If it's a little bit thin, such as this one, even better. So I just continue to roll the felt within the towel. And up until now, I haven't been working the felt, you know, aggressively. I've been encouraging the wool fibers to start migrating through the silk. This will encourage them more. But you need to be very careful at the beginning not to um, push down on your package, not to let it get too, too flat, because if you do, you may run into problems. And you want to start both gently and you don't want to do too many rubs at the one time. I would never recommend that somebody, for example, does um, or too many rolls, 100 rolls. I'm just going to roll, let's say 20 with my hands here, 20 here and 20 here. I might even start with 10 and just move them out and see how that goes, then open it, rotate the package and keep going. So let me just start and I'm going to count to myself. So one roll is forward with the hands up and backwards. So I'm going to start with 10 with my hands in the very middle. So that's 10 rolls. Now I'm going to move my hands out a bit. It's 10 there. And now I'm going to move my hands to the outside edge. So in effect, I've done 30 rolls and I can feel it's getting slightly flatter there. So rather than continue, I feel that for a better quality felt, it makes sense to open this now, reposition the bubble wrap, change it so that I'm rolling from the other end and then I'll do 30 from the other end. Now, if you think about a sandwich, you, a closed sandwich, you have a layer of bread, a layer of filling, and another layer of bread on top. I like to think of my bubble wrap like the bread and my felt as if it's the filling in the sandwich. And if I was not careful, it might be that when I would unroll this, the bubble wrap, which has shifted forwards, would go underneath the package. I'm actually going to demonstrate that so you see what I mean. So if you discover this is a really good tip, particularly as a beginner. If you discover that as you're unrolling your package, you can see your project and you only have one layer of bubble wrap underneath it at the beginning. If you keep rolling, you'll end up with two layers of bubble wrap under your project. So what you need to remember is what I said to you, that upper piece of bubble wrap rolls forwards. So as you open your package, think of having a smooth layer on the top and that's your top piece of bread from the sandwich. And look what happens. As I unroll this, now my felt is contained within the two pieces of bubble wrap. So that's a really good tip for you. Make sure, think of your felt as if it's the filling in a sandwich and make sure that the upper piece of bubble wrap has the smooth surface facing you. So what also happens when you roll, the piece of your felt that has the most pressure at any stage is the piece that's in this center of the roll. So I like to just push down. And I need to be careful then that the next time I roll it up that this piece here is not in the center. So I will be rotating my piece. So I'm lifting off the bubble wrap and I can just pull on the underneath piece of bubble wrap. And can you see that there already are some uh, crinkles here that this looks like it might already actually be shrinking a little bit. So I don't want to be aggressive with this, but I just want to lift the silk up 
very gently and I'm just teasing this out. I'm going to reposition the bubble wrap, turn it around and roll it from the other side. Now I do have a tip for you that can be very helpful if you're a beginner and it's how you can use a pool noodle to help with the rolling. So I think I'll just go and get a pool noodle now and I can show you that tip as well. Pool noodles are actually really handy to have in your felting studio. If you don't have one of these, you can also go to a hardware store and you can get this sort of foam um, stuff. It can be used for multiple purposes, but often it's used around plumbing pipes. And in fact, for me, this shorter piece is probably going to be easier to use. Although the pool needle, because it is firmer, is actually uh, nicer to roll on. But I'm just going to use this pool noodle, or not pool noodle, this plumbing uh, foam here, to roll up my piece of felt. Now I have rotated this piece of felt, so I'm rolling it in a different direction to the previous time. And I'm going to put it inside a towel. So what the core is doing is, it's making the roll of felt a wider diameter. There is less pressure on the center, um, the felt that's in the middle of the roll, there's less pressure and it's easier to roll, particularly if you're a beginner, when you have so some sort of a firm core inside. Having said that, I'm making a piece of Nuno felt and I don't want to roll too much without opening the package and checking what's happening. If I was actually making a piece of flat felt, I would roll for slightly longer. So this is how a pool noodle or some sort of a foam core can help you roll your felt. So 10 rolls, then I move my hands out. And back up further again. And when I'm unrolling, whether I've got the pool noodle in or not, I've got to just remember the bubble wrap is like the bread of a sandwich and I need to make sure my felt is inside that. The felt is like the filling. And I can see here where this bit looks like it's crinkling slightly. I'm just going to stretch that a little bit. Um, but what I'm hoping is that that is indicating that the wool fibre is starting to go through the silk fabric and it's also starting to shrink maybe a little bit. But I have to be very careful. I don't want to start titivating this and looking too, um, too much. I want to just keep working from one end to the other, the ends that have more bubble wrap. And I'm going to do the rolling a few more times and then I'll have a look at the underneath of the uh, piece just to see. The underneath is actually what's going to be my upper surface. So I'm going to take this around. So it's important to get firm contact at the beginning of your roll and if the bubble wrap is moving on top allow it move forward. Um, I rolled my felt in a towel before, but it's not necessary. So if you feel you can roll it happily without it opening, don't worry about the towel. Now, I could also rotate the piece before I open it. 
and then it would already be <laughs> turned around ready for the next set of rolling. And the only reason I didn't do that before was because I'm talking to you, sharing the technique, and I forgot about that. think I can see a few little fibers coming through there but I'm not going to investigate too too closely for another little while and then I might take a close-up photograph so that you can actually see what I'm looking for before I um, move on to the next stage of the Nuna Falcon process. starting to get a bit looser there so I will rotate and open it up. actually be difficult to see fibers coming through and um, if you're not used to specific um, if you're not used to what you're looking for and also um, with the light it can be difficult we can see now that there's a little bit of um, light on this so it, you just need to, to be careful not to move to the next stage of the process too quickly so I'm going to give you a bit of a tip here um, I seem to be sharing quite a few tips during this particular video but I would actually like to roll this from this side and from this side and I don't want to lift the whole piece up yet because I think it's too delicate to, to rotate the whole piece of silk fabric and the, and the fibre. I can also see a piece of my own hair here. And um, Tweezers are good for picking out things. So there is a way, it's a little bit laborious. But what I could do is, I could put this piece of bubble wrap in this direction. So you can see now that the longer flap is there. I need to make sure to try and cover everything. And I am very careful going to turn that over. So now the piece is turned over and I can lift that bubble wrap up and I can reposition it here. piece over, rotate it and I hope you followed what I did there but basically I'm now looking at the wool side of the felt again and I have rotated my piece so I'm just going to do some more rolls in this direction and I will use this again.
and now I can see little sort of ridgy bits coming there but actually I know that this is really just because the wool is starting to shrink it's a little bit of a balancing act understanding when the wool is shrinking or when your piece is creasing it may be a crease that you don't want to work in but as the Nuno felt starts to come together you do want the silk to pucker and you do want it to shrink Now at any stage if you want to take a break you can. I would like to leave the bubble wrap on top of my felt when I take a break. So this would be a good good time maybe just let, let the fibres relax for 20 minutes, half an hour and then come back and continue working them. What you may find is that if you have a break and you let the fibres relax the whole thing actually comes together quicker afterwards. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a pause and then come back and finish this piece. So I've had a short break and I've also had a look to see are the wool fibers starting to come through the silk. They are, but I would like to just do another um, two sets of rolls and then we'll have a look and we'll take a close up shot so you can see what I'm actually seeing. With any felt making, I think it's, it's much better if you're unsure about whether you're ready to progress to the next stage. It's much better to do a little bit more work um, and say you're not ready rather than go ahead too soon. Because if you go ahead too quickly, what can happen is you run into problems. In our case, when we're making Nuno felt, the fibre might um, tear away from the silk. So here I go again. I am actually putting a little more pressure downwards now. Rotating my piece, opening it, making sure to keep the felt within the bubble wrap. Lifting the bubble wrap. And I can see that this is coming together. It, it's just from experience, but in, a, in another couple of minutes, I'm going to actually show you what the reverse looks like because we'll be moving on to the fulling or the shrinking stage. Remember the top piece of bubble wrap, don't worry if it moves forward. As the piece comes together, I don't mind giving a few extra rolls, but at the beginning, it's just 10, 20, 30. What I'm actually 
actually going to do now is I'm going to turn this piece over so that I'm rolling it with the wool on the outside of the bundle and the silk fabric on the inside. And when I do this, I do it very gently. I don't slap it down on the table. And this is going to give me the opportunity to lift the bubble wrap up here also and to see whether the fibre is coming through. Now it can be very difficult to see, but as far as my eyes are concerned, I can see little wool fibres on the upper surface of the silk. But I still would like to just give this a few more sessions of rolling. And then I'm going to take a close up shot so you can see what I can see. Before I even stretch the bubble wrap, can you see how much more crinkled this looks now? This is another indication that it is starting to shrink. And stretching and shrinking is what makes for the best quality felt, but I do want to be careful that I don't pull the silk fabric up off the wool. add that if this was actually um, a Pongé 5 silk or maybe even an 8 Mome silk or Habitai 5 or 8, I could move on to the next stage quicker but because this is approximately a 12 Mome, a heavier silk, I need to, just to be very careful to give it a little bit of extra work as it takes longer for the light quantity of wool to come through the heavier quality of silk. I'm going to do one more set of rolling and then we'll have a little close-up look at this and we'll see um, if it's possible through the lens of the camera to actually see the fibre as it has come through the silk fabric.
it can be really quite difficult to see the fiber on the upper surface. Now, I personally think that I can see that there are little bits of purple coming through on the paler bits. We'll take a close up look in a minute. But sometimes what I find is I've got to lift the piece up and hold it on my hand and I just rotate my hand a bit. So from the light perspective, I can just see are there fibers there? Now, I would like to do some more work on this piece, but I think we'll just take a close-up shot now uh, just to see if through the lens of the camera, you can also see the fibers starting to come through. This close-up shot shows you what I am looking for, little wool fibers on the surface of the fabric. So I now, that my eyes are adjusting to the light, I can actually see the tips of the wool fibers coming through the silk pretty much everywhere on the piece. And when I turn it back, it's beautiful just to see what it's looking like on the other side as well. I can see how the red is starting to combine with the purple wool, but I do need to be careful with the linen embellishments. They're probably a little bit more difficult to felt in than silk embellishments are. It's just the nature of the fiber um, or the strands of the, the thread, whatever that particular waste product is. So I'm just going to do one more set of rolling in this direction. I'll turn it over, do the same in the other, and then we move on to the next stage of the process, which actually happens very quickly. So noodle felting is laborious. There are ways you can make it faster if you decide to use things such as an electric sander. But I feel that at the beginning, it's important to understand how to do all of this by hand and know what you're looking for. I should also add, I don't use an electric sander myself. I have in the past, I don't use it, but a tumble dryer, which I will explain about in another occasion, that's what I would use if I wanted to speed up the process. Before I even lift the top layer of bubble wrap off, I can feel that this is starting to shrink more. It's just, it feels different under my hands. And while it may look a very similar size to what it started out as, I know it's going to um, not take much to actually finish this piece. So one more set of rolls from this direction and then I'll move on to fulling or shrinking. Personally, you can see the tips of the wool has come through the silk. And something that I like to do is to work my piece really gently against the bubble wrap, very, very, very carefully, lifting, lifting the felt up slightly and just going like this. I'm not sure if any of you clean in your house, but the motion is like if you're actually dusting something. I'm not rubbing aggressively. 
because I don't want the wool underneath to come apart from the silk fabric but I'm just giving this a little bit of a gentle rub against the bubble wrap and I'm feeling the bubbles with the tips of my finger or fingers and I do have some friends that find this difficult to do so take your time if you choose to do this maybe lift the piece up off the table and note that I've got the silk fabric on the upper surface and the wool is underneath and this just helps even further get the fibre to migrate through the silk. I'm just working across the length. I just do this everywhere before we throw the Luna felt against the table. The most enjoyable part of the process and where you can really get rid of any aggression in your body if you're tense about something. Again, I'm recording this video sitting down, but normally I would be standing up at this stage as it's actually easier on my back and my shoulders. So an area that I like to pay particular attention to is around the outside edge of my piece. So I might do an extra little bit of rubbing at that outside edge. Just work my whole way around. And I better have a check and just see what the situation is underneath. Yep, yeah. the linen isn't pulling away, so that's good. I also need to be careful with the rolled edge of the scarf that it doesn't fold under and felt down. I want the rolled edge to be visible in the finished piece. So that's something just to keep an eye on the edges of your, your um, fabric. If I was working with silk yardage, I would have torn the edge and I wouldn't want the edge visible. So in that case, I might, or I would, add the wool fibre over the edge, but with this I want the nice rolled edge of the scarf to be visible. So taking my time, working around down, feeling the bubbles through the tips of my fingers, and I've got one more length, one more side to rub. Now I'm just going to turn this over and check. So in fact the rubbing that I did has lifted the linen fibres in places, which isn't great, but this is something that happens. It's more likely to happen when I'm doing a demonstration and teaching, but I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to finish the whole piece. And if some of those linen fibres have not integrated very well by the end, I'll just snip them off. So don't, don't get stressed about that. But the wool fibre is combining really well. I can see the tips of the fibre through on this side. So this is ready to go to the throwing stage, I think. So for that, you always want to throw with the fabric side on the outside of your package. You want to have your wool fiber on the inside, otherwise it can make it too hairy. And at the beginning, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would just throw 10 times I would open the package very carefully just so that I can assess what's happening because if you were likely to run into any problems this is the time that the problems would be visible 
So if you threw this too soon, what you would see is you would see that the fiber was lifting up from the silk, the wool fiber, and that is not happening here. But if that was happening to you, what you would need to do then is you would need to go back to doing some more rubbing and rolling before you would move to the throwing. But already I can see that the wool is starting to shrink and the piece of the scarf that's going to be the front of the scarf is actually not quite as smooth as it was before and that's something that I'm aiming for. So I'll just fold the scarf in again, silk on the outside and I'll throw it. This time I'm going to do 20. Excuse me. And I hope you can see it's starting to shrink a little bit. It's just crinkling up a little bit on this side. So I will fold it or randomly put it into an, a different position. Since we're standing up, it's great. Because I can actually hit it harder. And here in particular, I can see I'm getting the crinkly texture that I'm looking for. It's, I want it to be significantly more crinkly. It's going to shrink a lot, so it's starting to happen. And the next thing I'll be doing is adding some hot water to the mix. shrinking more in areas where the wool is and I'm just going to get some hot water now. I'm going to actually take some from my kettle. Usually I would do this in the bathroom and I would put it into a basin of really hot water and I would squeeze it and add more soap. I'm going to do it here in the kitchen so you can see what I'm doing but if you live in a hot climate such as Australia or somewhere where water is rationed you can also put your piece of Nunafalt into the microwave and switch it on just for a short while and the soap and water that's in that will actually get hotter and expand. So I'm going to get some hot water and show you what I would do. So something that is really important when you are at this throwing stage, the fulling or shrinking stage of your Nunafalt is Never throw it against the bubble wrap. Never do that process unless your fabric is very soapy. So I would have a basin of hot water. I would squeeze the water through and then I would add more soap. And I would make sure that the whole piece was very soapy before I would throw it again. Remember what I said, don't let the wool fibre rub against your table. Make sure that the silk fabric is always on the outside. So although this needs a few more sessions, I think you're going to be able to see how much this has already shrunk. It's becoming more bubbly in texture and it's particularly obvious around the outside here where there's that even line of fibre. You can see 
that that is all coming through and it looks more purple on this upper surface here. So another go in hot water. And the heat is also helping with the shrinking process. I can see too that the water here is getting very dark and that is because this is a vintage scarf and some of the dye is definitely running from the silk, but I'm not worried about that. See that this linen is not incorporating very well. I haven't used it before. It was a recent gift, so maybe that wasn't the best decision. Now this is starting to really shrink, so what I want to do is just make sure the outside edge is nice. That I can see all the rolled edge, which I can. any area that's not shrunk as much as I would like. I can just work it individually against the bubble wrap. The idea with the hot water is just to help with the shrinking. That water is really pretty cool now. And hopefully you get the idea. Let's have a look. So I can see that this is just about finished. I'm just going to check the outside edges. If you remember, I didn't add the silk right out to the edge, so I can still see that rolled edge. What needs to happen now is this needs to get a rinse, and I personally like to use hot water. So I will give this a really good rinse to make sure that all the soap comes out of the piece. I'll do that in hot water. Um, I might choose to throw it another time, in which case I need to add silk back into it, but I, or soap, apologies, but I actually like the texture that this has now. The wool fibre has come through the silk very well. I'm not as happy with the linen embellishments. They have not worked very well, so be it. I'm just going to finish this piece and then it will get an iron on the hottest setting of the iron and I can take some photographs. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm just going to go and give it that, that wash in hot water and I'm going to squeeze it very aggressively, remove all the soap, don't be afraid to wash it, and then a hot iron and I'll show you the finished piece. 
So I have now got my completed scarf. All that's needed is to just check it, to iron it, and I think I'm going to snip off some of those red linen fibers. So what I did was I just put it in underneath hot water in the basin in my bathroom and I just gave it a good squeeze through and I gave it two proper rinses until the soap was gone and the water ran clear. So I'm sure you can see now that it is nice and crinkly on this silk fabric side. And let's have a look at the other side. So <laughs> I have to say I am disappointed with how this, these linen strands felted in in places. I hadn't actually used them before and I was expecting them to behave more like the fibre I had had previously. However, in certain areas they're beautiful and in other areas they're hanging off a bit. So I would just say these things happen to everybody regardless of your experience. Probably. I should have done a sample beforehand, before I was showing you how they might have felt, but I didn't, so that's what's happened. So what I'm actually going to do is just take my scissors and I'm going to snip off the worst pieces. Then I'm going to iron it and hopefully there will be some of the linen will have felted in, some of it won't, and you're going to see what the finished piece will look like. When I started felting, I would have been horrified at what I'm doing because I learned you never cut anything. But honestly, things happen and you have to know how you can adjust them. So now, the linen hasn't felted in everywhere, but it's in some places. I've got a nice texture on this side. And what I'm going to do is just show you how I iron my felt. So... Ironing is not really my forte, and you can possibly see that from the equipment I'm using. However, one of these irons that, that has the water in a container in the bottom is absolutely marvellous. This is a steam iron, and I can actually iron for over one hour without stopping, should I choose to do so. And I cannot recommend one like this enough. And the water, funny enough, comes down this sort of um, flex here. And I like to iron my felt. I usually iron on the hottest setting of the iron. And I would iron on the wool side rather than the silk side. So I tend to iron directly onto the felt itself 99% of the time. But if you have a worry and you don't want to do that, you can get these, I don't know what they're called, um, these things, they're designed, um, for you to iron through and you can just iron like that but what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to even out the edge I want that outside edge to be ironed flat and let's just have a look here so you can see that I've ironed there but it hasn't me meant that I don't have beautiful texture on the other side and often people think that they're going to lose their Nuno felt texture if they actually iron their piece. Another alternative would be to position a linen or a cotton tea towel directly on your felt and to iron through that. So that would be what I would be likely to do if I wasn't ironing directly on the felt itself. So I'm just going to go around the outside and this is also actually drying the piece as we go. So I hope you're going to see how beautiful it's going to look once it is fully finished. By the way, I post regular tips, tutorials and information from my textile studio to my YouTube channel every week so if you're interested in keeping up to date with what's happening you can subscribe to my channel and you can also join my mailing list it's the best way of staying in touch and getting regular updates
I'm not sure about you, but um, until I felt it and eco printed, I never ever ironed. Um, but it definitely finishes the pieces off nicely. And should you be thinking of creating a piece of Nuno felt to eco print, which is what I do most often, in that case, I would suggest that you use cellulose embellishing fibers rather than silk or wool because they will show up nicely on the surface once you have eco printed your felt. Okay, I'm nearly finished. So go around the outside first and then the inside. That's actually back to the first side, I think. Well, it's probably just a little bit of the center of the scarf that I haven't ironed. So you can see here that the linen has not adhered as much. That's very obvious. Having said that, I'm going to actually wear this as it is for a while because I'm going to fold this piece in half and I will be wearing the silk, the puckered silk side out. That's the way I like to wear my pieces. And I just like the flash of color underneath maybe if it's worn like that, so you can see a little bit of the color. But for me, this has been um, a successful piece of Nuna felting. The wool fiber has come through the silk. I've got a band around the outside where I didn't add fiber, so I like that little detail. And I love the hot pop of color from the linen, although I'm not happy with how it actually felted in. But so be it. I hope you've enjoyed this step-by-step -step tutorial about creating your own piece of Nuno felt. And I hope you join me in a future video uh, for more tips and tutorials. Over and out from Clashine.